All right, so there's a million ways to cook a turkey. Dry brine, wet brine, trust, whatever, you, you name it. One thing you may not have tried is mayonnaise. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be a turkey with mayo, boozy shallot, mashed potatoes, weird stuff stuffed in here. It's a slightly untraditional Thanksgiving kind of year. I know, I know, we put mayonnaise on our sandwiches, but mayonnaise on raw meat can be a little bit of a hard sell. I mean, in reality, mayonnaise is just egg yolk and oil that you're just gonna emulsify together. I mean, it's, it's really not all that weird. You know what's another emulsification that we use all the time? Butter. It's an emulsification of milk, fat, and water. So really, they're kinda like the same thing. And if you saw my mayonnaise on the steak video, you know you can get a hella good sear, which is gonna help us get extra crispy skin. This turkey recipe is really of the utmost efficiency. No brining or preparation required. Just make sure you set a timer and thaw your bird ahead of time. I say efficiency because in addition to just slathering some mayo to help us get that browned skin right before cooking, we are also going to spatchcock our turkey or remove its backbone. So the big benefit to spatchcocking your turkey is that it's gonna completely level this cooking surface. So a typical turkey is kind of rolled up something like this, where the breast is at the highest point. Now what that does is it's gonna cook your breast a lot faster and dry it out, whereas you're waiting on your dark meat to come up to temperature. But with the spatchcock method, it's gonna kind of level everything out. So we're gonna pull this when the breast meat is at 155, and then our dark meat should be at 175 degrees Fahrenheit at the same time, meaning we get juicy breast meat and cooked through for all those connective tissues of the dark meat. So before layering on our mayo, we're gonna come all over this with some coarse kosher salt and fresh ground pepper. And make sure you do not skimp here. No one likes a bland turkey. So now that we're all seasoned up with salt and pepper, it's time to come in with just a very thin layer of mayo that's gonna help facilitate some browning on this skin. And for right now, I'm just gonna use plain mayo, but I will be adding in some herb mayo with some traditional Thanksgiving classics after it's almost done in the oven. So let me lather this thing up, get it in the oven, and then we'll talk about these herbs. We're gonna pop this in the oven for 80 to 90 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and you may wanna rotate the pan once about every 30 minutes or so to get that nice even browning. But meanwhile, let's talk about that herb mayo. Here we have basically the holy trinity of Thanksgiving herbs, which is rosemary, sage, and thyme. And now, I'm just gonna roughly use equal parts of both and just slide it into some mayonnaise and then this is gonna be used to spread on our turkey after it's out of the oven, but just with about five to 10 minutes left because if you apply it earlier, all the herbs start to burn. I know because I tested it on a chicken and it, it just didn't work. So once that breast is 155 and the dark meat is at least 175, pull it right out, make sure you use a meat thermometer, and then we're gonna let it rest on the cutting board for about 10 to 15 minutes so carryover cooking can bring that temperature up to around 160 to 165.
Well, now that we have our turkey done and we have these beautiful sides, there's only one thing left to do, and that is pumpkin pie. Luckily for me, I have one waiting in the kitchen. I got it for you, my dude. No, not you. 